Good morning, and welcome to Power Up, Power Up for Success. I'm your host, Dr. Marcy Bryant, and I'm looking forward to our show today. I want to talk to you about God's desire for each one of his children that he created in the mother's womb that come into this world for us to have a life of freedom, a life that's free from the consequences of sin and free from uh, feeling hopeless, like there is no direction or aim for our lives. I just want you to know today that regardless of where you are, there is more for you to do and more more for you to fulfill in this earth. Because back in Genesis 1 and 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion. Do you know that we have dominion? And three major areas, dominion over the sea, the air, the land. And not only that, God blessed us. He blessed the creatures. He blessed us down through the ages. Having God's blessings is just awesome. God said for us to be fruitful. That means be productive with your life. Multiply. There's more than one way to to be fruitful and to multiply. Multiply, yes, giving birth, you know, having birth after birth after birth, but you can multiply what they do best and how uh, you can give them Uh, what they need to go down a particular path, uh, especially a path that is in their heart and is something that brings them joy and um, and makes life full of passion for them. That um, in a little while, we're going to be talking to a a very special guest, very special guest. And he's going to talk about his passion and what that passion, where it carried him to and what he's doing with his life now. I God told us to uh, replace Replenish, uh, fill up again uh, the things of the earth. He told us to subdue, bring things under control over which we have control over. Now, everything that comes into your life or my life, we don't always have control over. That's when we give it to God. But there are some things that we can control and then God expects us to do it. And then God has uh, such a big heart. He has given us everything that pertains to life. I love serving God. I love uh, giving glory and honor to his name. And I love God for bringing the special people across my uh, life so that I can share those people with you. That's how I feel about our guest today. I remember when he was a guest uh, several years ago on the Jeopardy show, and I think I watched every single episode. I did not want to miss it because I was enthralled. And to think that God would allow me to connect with him and he would agree to be on this show to talk about his life, his adventures, his goals and how his life has just been blessed from day one. Without further ado, I'm going to invite our guest, Kobe Barnett, on the show, welcoming him to Power Up for Success. God bless you, Kobe, and thank you so much for agreeing to come on the show. I feel blessed, Jess, just to be here and to have this experience and, you know, have the opportunity to talk about my life and you know, how that made me the person that I am now. So I hope I'm ready for any question you have to give me. <laughs> I think so. I mean, I tell you, I, I'm so excited about your life and uh, and the things that you did. First of all, tell me uh, the Kobe that grew up. How, how did he end up being a part of the Jeopardy stage? How did that happen for you? It, I grew up in a household that valued education, the valued knowledge. Um, The shortest way to explain it is when every little child wants to know about the world around them and their place in it. And it reached a point where I asked so many questions that my, you know, my grandmother and my mother who raised me, they basically said, who are given mine? You are given this way of interpreting the world and anything that you want to learn about the world you can. So even if you're child, well, you will learn at a level at a child. If you grow, you'll learn at the level of an adult. 
if you in whatever pathway that is and whatever time frame that is, you were able to figure this out. You were granted this gift of, you know, interpretation. You were granted this gift of seeking out more about the world. So I didn't need schools of grace for me. It was a place where I felt wanted, a place where I felt that I belonged, a place where I felt that I excelled. But I didn't just in the classroom. I learned everywhere that I wanted to learn. Uh, my grandmother, she bought a series of encyclopedias in 1988. Uh, they were mostly for my older brother because he's four years older than I am and never found much use for them. So they became mine. In any moment where I felt that I didn't know about the world and I didn't understand, I read. So when that came from an encyclopedia, that came from a family Bible, and I took that as an impetus to say, hey, I don't need to necessarily watch television I didn't even watch a whole bunch of game shows growing up, but I always wanted to learn about the world around me. And it's very, it's not a very common goal in life to say, well, what can I do with this? And about what can I do with this gift? What can I do with my talents? An adult I said, well, you enjoy school, you should be a teacher. There aren't a whole lot of 10 year olds who say they want to become a teacher when they're an adult. Yes. But that was my pathway from, you know, the age of 10 until the age of 22 when I actually became one. He set in that pathway to feel that you have a purpose in this life and that this is the best way for you to express who you are and to always be supported. When I was 12, I said that I, I wanted to go to Northwestern. So I grew up in Chicago and I didn't know much about Northwestern other than that's a school where smart kids go and they have a great football team. Not that I was ever going to play football, but you know, that was an added bonus. And my mother said, you do what it is that you need to do. And whatever wills will happen, whatever I can do to support you, whatever God grant to your experience, and if it's supposed to be, it'll be. And, you know, I excelled. Cool. I wrote like these essays that truly expressed who I am and who I wanted to be. And they accepted me. And they come down and they say, you have to come up with this sort of money to be here. And my mother sacrificed. My mother sacrificed her time and her efforts because she didn't know anything about the parents. Uh, she wasn't allowed to go by her parents, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but she wanted that for me because I was so devoted and so driven to be successful. She was going to do whatever in her power to make sure that that happened. That's wow. a short story that explains like why I came to be, why I value this education so much. Well, I'm an Wonderful. educator now. Now, how did Jeopardy come on your radar? Because I heard you say earlier that you weren't going to sit around and watch a whole bunch of, of uh, game shows. So how did Jeopardy end up on your radar? So I played on the academic team in high school and throughout college, and they recruit. So there are individuals who were very good at trivia, as I was. And by the time I was an adult, you know, those that were a little bit older than I, I was, they had tried out for the show. They had some success. And I distinctly remember a friend uh, posting about when they are, were having tryouts to be on Jeopardy. The first time that I tried out to be on Jeopardy, I got on. That is exceedingly rare. Um, I have other friends who have been involved in this international trivia community. They generally have a tryout every year and a half, every 18 months. And so there are people who have passed 10 tryouts. So we're talking 15 years of being able to be on Jeopardy, proving that you have what it takes to be on and they don't get on. So for whatever reason, perhaps they're not telegenic, but like they're certainly smart enough. They're certainly knowledgeable enough, but they're looking for a certain person. 
And so whatever I had, that is what they wanted to see. And after I was accepted, they had a callback. Some like my friend told me, I took the test. They have 50 questions. I think I answered 48 or 49 of them. Correct. But answering 48 versus answering, you know, 40, that doesn't put you in a better pool. It doesn't put you, bump you to the front of the line. It's a minimum. And then it's what they see in you. I After see. you pass this minimum, that shows, hey, hey, we want you to show. And what I recall from my in-person experience, there's a follow-up with an in-person experience that simulates Jeffrey. And they ask, ask those list of questions because you've already proven that you're intelligent. You've already proven that you're knowledgeable. They want to see how you interact with people because mm -hmm. while game show, it's entertainment. And the first thing that they asked me was, what would you do with the money? And I never thought about this in my life. I just said, it would be nice to be on the show. And the first thing that popped into my head was, I'm buying my mom a house. So, first thing that popped in my head immediately, and what are you going to do with that? Well, like, what kind of house are you going to get if you win $100,000? Well, whatever it was, I found it. And my mom's been living there ever since. Wow. So that first check, I won $100,000, I paid my taxes, and all of the remainder when getting my mom this, you know, this tiny condo in the suburbs of Chicago where she wanted to raise me, but I grew up in my grandparents' house because of money problems. And what people remember me for, they remember me for the big suits and my expressive face. But if anything, remember for what I did with that money, that I saw a chance to put somebody yes. ahead of myself mm -hmm. and a person who believed in me the most out of any person who provided for me more than anyone else. And oh, no matter what, that can't be taken away from me. That's right. Absolutely. That is an excellent, excellent story. And I am so glad that you shared it with us, giving us what your background was and how you got up there to uh, the Jeopardy. And you're a teacher and in the Chicago area. What we're going to do when we come back is we're going to talk about your life since Jeopardy, the things that you're doing now that you're so uh, proud of and passionate about that is helping other people uh, uh, be all that they can be, because certainly you are a leader and you opened a path for many to follow. And I thank you. So with uh, we're going to take a break right now and we're going to come back in just a second or two. And then we're going to pick up what Kobe is doing now and how he's helping others. We'll be right back. We here at Power Up would like to thank you for joining us each week as we bring words of love and friendship and fellowship and hope into your living rooms. So if we have been a blessing to you at all, would you please consider a donation in any amount payable to B is in building, V is in victorious, T is in temple, that's the headquarters ministry, or you can cash app us at dollar sign power up four. Please include your address, your contact information, because we would like to be a blessing to you by sending you a copy of a book of poetry and prose entitled Glory in Poetry. This will just lighten your heart. It will give you words of inspiration and encouragement every day. Glory in Poetry will keep you focused on God, keep you focused on Christ, and allow you to know every day without a doubt that Jesus loves you. God bless you. Hi, if you're just joining us, we've been talking to Kobe Burnett and he has such a beautiful, wonderful, magnificent story. And now we're going to continue that story to let you know how the blessings of God not only has followed him in his young life through uh, being a Jeopardy champion, but, je but tell us uh, Kobe, if you don't mind my calling you Kobe, tell us what you're doing now. Tell us how your life has changed since that experience. So, leaving up, leaving from where where we started, 
you know, once I bought my mother a home, I was satisfied with what I had accomplished in life. Uh, but I got the chance to be in and win again. And I got myself my own home. Uh, <laughs> you know, I moved out. And part of that story is uh, I met my wife, uh, the mm -hmm. person who I'm going to marry, uh, through. She was a fan of the show in town. And, you know, she asked, you know, hey, you know, would you like to go get a drink? It's like, well, I'm not a drinker, but I do play trivia. Would you like to come out and do that? And even from that one experience, I had no idea that this person would, you know, become my wife, but here we are. All right. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's a blessing that, that just seemed out of the blue. Uh, you know, like that's just determined. Like, you know, these things move on. on. The idea that I am, you know, still an educator. So people ask me what I did with my money. I paid my taxes. I bought this. I went back to work because I know what my calling is. Mm -hmm. uh, I became a college counselor. Uh, at a local school, and the talents that I have for research, the talents that I have for being forthright and honest about my opinion and giving advice came to the forefront. So I feel that I'm doing what it is that I've set to do. And I'm glad that, you know, Jeffrey puts me in a bit of a spotlight. You have a sort of celebrity on your side, but I still have to do my job day in and day out. I have to advocate for these kids. And part of, of where that comes from is I think about my experiences. I was the first generation in my family to go to college. And so there were pitfalls. There were things I didn't understand. I could have done better if I only had, you know, the wherewithal to prepare. Uh, just to give a bit more of my backstory, I went to a nice prep school in suburbia that my mother also sacrificed for me to, you know, do. But they don't teach you what to do once you leave. The vast majority of the students that are there, they come from families who have been through this. They come from families who have internalized what, what it takes to see at these next educational and professional levels. And the resources aren't really there unless you ask for them. So I want to be that resource now. I don't want people to stumble where I am, even though I grew from the experience. I get to say, you know, to explain, look, this is where I stumbled. This is where I had problems. I don't want you to have those problems. I want you to be as prepared as possible to take on this next stage of your life and to be happy and be blessed and seek out what it is that you want to do in life. So even as a college counselor, a student comes up to me and says, you know, Mr. B, you know, I'm feeling, you know, higher education. I want to go out and do hair. All right, we're going to find the best place for you to learn how to do that, the best place for you to hone those skills, the best way for you to express those talents. Like, you're not just going to go out there and just show up at the first school that says, hey, give us some money. Whatever it is that you want to do, I want to be behind you 100% and make sure that you are giving your all because you'll find where you need to be. You'll find where you need to be placed. And I think that, that sentiment comes from my own life, and I'm able to reflect those beliefs onto my own students. And so if I can't do that, then I'm not doing my job. And I've been very happy with what I've accomplished so far. Mm -hmm. How about that? That's great. Now, would you give us, uh, if you will, a, a success story, one where you saw uh, a student coming to you and, you know, with whatever their hope, their dreams were, um, and how um, you watched them move from this one place this of, of feeling like, how can we make this happen and go over here and make it happen? Uh, uh, share with us a success story that you had the opportunity to be a part of. All right. So I think the my third year here, so right before the pandemic, uh, there was a student who, you know, absolutely wanted to uh, become a medical doctor. So, all right, where do I do this? How do I get in this right now? And I said, well, it's a process. You have to prove that you can handle 
you don't just jump into becoming a doctor. You just need to find an environment where you excel in sciences. And we want to provide the best place for you to do that. And, you know, she was an excellent student, is an excellent student. And so she had all of these Ivy Leagues on her, on her, on her forefront, all of these schools that jump out and uh, jump out at you. It was like, well, maybe that's not necessarily the place. Like, I want you to try this. I want you to put your effort into knowing about these schools, knowing how to represent yourself. Sort of shy. So part of schools love smart kids. Schools love good grades. They love high test scores, but what puts you over the top is your ability to express yourself and why you should be there, why you have a call, what it is that you do. And we spent months, like absolute months, trying to figure out and get this story out of you. So whatever you're expressing, a fool cannot take that away from you, right? Mm -hmm. A fool cannot argue against you that this is not who you claim to be. So my sister, she wound up at uh, Carleton College in Minnesota. Now, you'd be able to find Carleton College on, in Minnesota on a map when we first started this process? Absolutely not. But she found a place that would accept her for who she was, that accepted her it down, and that she was able to express herself fully in her writing, in her accomplishments. And, you know, that was, you know, a good success story. To get someone, you know, if, I, if I'm able to say another one, it's to get someone who, look, I don't want to do this at all. Well, it's just like, well, I understand that you don't want to do this at all. But what if you hear me out? What if you have this as an option? And if you don't want to mm-hmm. pursue this option, mm-hmm. you don't have to listen to a word I say after graduation. We're both mm-hmm. adults. I don't have any control over what you do in the school. You're, a, you're alumni. And then at the end, you know, she wound up at a, you know, a community college, but at that community college, excelling at that community college, doing is that she had no idea that she wanted to set out to do. To have that window mm-hmm. open up to her, yes, all I wanted to do. And you know, at the end, you wanted to do something else. Well, whatever that calling is, I want to make sure that you have it access. So, those are the two stories that come off my head. All right, that's good. Well, now we're get, we're getting down to the closing of your interview, and what I would like you to do with this uh, next two to three minutes is what would you say to someone who's feeling directionless, hopeless, like they don't really know what they want to do with life. They just want to just give up and have this lazy fair come what may attitude what kind of advice would you give them to keep them motivated or to get them motivated and inspired to follow their path so god didn't put you on this earth to do nothing with your life and so however you feel about that sentiment well that's just what i'm saying that you are here and that we are to be social animals. We are built to interact with other people. Yes, yes. So whatever that role is, there is one that is picked out for you. You don't know it yet, but it exists. And no matter what your skills, no matter what trauma that you've experienced in this life, there is some person who is there for you. There's some person who is called to be there for you, and you are called for them. Whatever that relationship may be, every human being is better, is made better by interacting with other human beings, good people. We can be corrupted by the forces of evil people, but we can also be made better. Even the worst people can be made better if they're surrounded by good people with good intentions. So Mm. you are somewhere on that scale. You don't know exactly where you are on that scale, but your interactions with other people will tell you that you're not alone in this process. That you have some level of success and inspire to, no matter where you are right now. The resources that are out there, maybe you don't have access to, but they are out. And that 
there's no is it as bad as it might get there's always you know a feeling that you can always strive to do more so if that can summarize my feelings what i would say Oh, that is wonderful. I love it. I love it. Absolutely excellent. Now, someone may, watching this show, may want to get in contact with you. How would you like them to reach you? Okay. So, a professional email uh, through my work. So, uh, C. Burnett, spelled my name, like first initial, last name. Okay. So, that's C. Burnett at what's the name of the school the school is spear academy so spear academy.org s-p-e-e-r i'm on linkedin that's how dr marcy found me in the first place yes so if you would like yes. to if, if if you would like to find me there you can that's not a that's not a front that is even though it's my jeopardy picture which you're technically not supposed to do <laughs> you can find you you could find me there uh, if you Absolutely. need someone to speak out, if you need someone to talk to, you come with, you know, you come correct, you come with a smile on your face, and, you know, you're very honest and direct about what it is that you want. I want to be here for you. So just reach out, that, just reach out through there. So that's our show for this week. Look for me next week, same time, same place. I'm Dr. Marcy signing off now and reminding you that you were created by God for great things. You are blessed. So walk in your blessings every day. Learn it, live it, and then pass it on. Are you looking for a change? You can start the new year with a brand new career, one that will be fulfilling, engaging, and profitable. Hi, I'm Dr. Marcy Tillman Bryant, and I delight in helping others reach their business and professional goals, especially in the areas of coaching and degree education. Our Power Up team of professionals will train you to become a certified coach in the field of your expertise, and then and teach you how to market your brand. In just a few short weeks, you will be in business doing what you are passionate about. After all, when you do what you love, it's not work, it's service with gratifying results. The first 10 persons to register will receive three special bonuses valued at $1,000 for free.